Hi everybody, it's Sandy and today I'm going to test out the fluorescence of the fluorescent Copic colors. I'm going to tell you about a new class coming and I'm going to go over a little bit about the new Copic re-inkers that are finally making their way into stores. Let's begin first with the re-inkers because that is going to be of the most interest probably in this video. I bought a couple of them. They are called Copic Ink instead of Copic Various Ink. They're not called refills or re-inkers, but they have 12 ounces in them. The old ones had 25, so they are about half the size of the old bottles, which means they're going to be easier to store because they're tinier. But these are inks in them for refilling. They're not pens. They look like a pen. They're just pen shaped. And you take the plastic off and unscrew the lid. They are twist tops. And you can see the ink inside. It's a little easier to see on camera with this lighter color. And I like that you can see that because it's going to be easier to tell what you need to get a new one of. The nib on the end is much longer than the old one, which is going to make me less of a mess when I am filling my pens. Super excited about that. And I'm super excited that Ellen Hudson finally has some of them in stock. She's going to be waiting for a long time, as is everyone else, to be fully restocked. It's taken them a while to get them out. So get what you need as you find them. For the card, I counted how many octopi I had and decided to make an octopi party card. And I did them all in a long, tall card this time because I wanted to have a deep sea picture. I've attached it just with a little adhesive onto my craft assistant so I can do my airbrush spraying with the Copic airbrush gun, put the chisel nib in and start spraying. Now, some of my pens work better than others. If you use a brand new chisel nib and a nice full marker, it's much easier to do. I end up fighting them and wiggling the nibs and that sort of thing to get ink to come out half the time because I don't feel like re-inking or I don't feel like changing the nib because a lot of my nibs are the original ones that I've had forever in there and you can't color with them. They're so dry and crusty. So they don't airbrush well when they're all dry and crusty. So if you're having trouble, that might be why. With this card, I debated whether or not I was going to try masking them all out or just cut out the octopi afterward from a different piece of paper, color them, and glue them on. And as I was doing this, I thought, let me see if I can create some highlights on these without having to deal with all the fussy cutting it was going to take to glue these octopi on here. The one at the bottom from Trinity is super detailed. The, the two middle ones are Lawn Fawn, and they have lots of arms. This little guy from Ellen Hudson with the big eyes, I love him for his big eyes. He's got lots of little twisty arms and things. It would be a nightmare to cut out. As well as the little one from Waffle Flower up on the top with his hat. He's so cute in his little pirate hat. So I decided I was going to try to keep away from spraying on them. And before doing all the coloring on another piece of paper, I would see what happens if I color into this background. I tried eliminating some of it by just going around their heads so that I could have less color to deal with. With Copic markers, the marker itself pushes out color from where it is if you use a lighter color on top of a darker one. So here I'm using one of the fluorescent blues to make bubbles, and you can see it does lighten that color. I can use it to color on the image as well. Even though there's blue ink there, I can use other colors to push that blue ink out of the way. You could do that with a just the, the clear marker, the zero, and push it out of the way with that and then color into it, but then you have a lot of moisture in the paper. So I just went right in with the colors themselves, specifically the fluorescence. I thought it would be really cool to see how fluorescent the fluorescents really are. Because now, if you remember a video I did a while back, I bought a black light flashlight for my black light ink. So I have some glow in the dark ink and I wanted to try to see if I could use that with these. So I'm coloring first just to see what happens using some other colors along with the fluorescence because I wasn't getting any depth of color with these. They're kind of bright and garish sort of colors for the most part, but I decided to try them all out on the different octopi and see what happens. Now this orange on top of the blue was a nightmare. It came out really, really bad. It did not want to push the color 
So if you're going to try this technique of pushing it out from airbrushed color, then I would try a little swatch on a piece of paper first and see which colors are going to work and which colors are not. It could have been because that marker needed to be re-inked. It wasn't pushing enough out. I don't really know. But I decided that one was just going to start getting darker. And then as they're getting deeper into the ocean, they're getting darker anyway. So that kind of worked. So I went in with a dark marker to do that. All the colors that I'm using on this, by the way, are in a picture on my blog if you want to see what they all were. Because I don't remember while I'm sitting here editing the video and trying to get this thing out for you. So I kind of kept going back and forth on this one to add more of the, the fluorescent orange along with the darker color. And then I decided to just let it go for a bit. It was getting really soppy wet and I would go deal with it later <laughs> once I saw how it dried. The bottom one, I'm going to use the fluorescent violet and the fluorescent blue and see how the two of them work. And those were nicely re-inked so they had a lot more color that they could push out in order to create some highlights. But I like the way that this whole thing was starting to develop with lighter colors at the top and darker at the bottom because it also disguised the fact that the stamp at the bottom here from Trinity has thinner lines than all the rest of the stamps. So it looks a little funky if you have them all in one picture. If one has thin lines, one has thick lines, etc. This hides that to some extent because really I'm just looking now at the highlights and letting all the dark colors fall into that blue. The other thing about coloring underwater things is that unless there's a light shined onto something when they're filming it, there's no color once you get down to the bottom of the ocean. You might get a little filtering of light, but you're just getting grays and blues, if that. So this kind of pu pushing of color in here is a little unrealistic, but then again, an octopi party with one of them showing up in a pirate hat is probably also <laughs> Not particularly realistic. So there's that as well. So once I got all of these guys colored, I added a little bit of texture down there with a couple different colors into the sand at the bottom of the whole panel. And then I took all the different colors to add bubbles to it. I thought that would be a really good way to see which ones, when I shine the black light on it, which ones show up, which ones look brighter than other ones. And then I also went in with a Posca pen, which has nice white brightness to it and makes big dots. And then my little Signo pen, my Uniball Signo. So there are just bubbles, bubbles, bubbles galore, both dots and circles to make this a whole lot of fun. So here is my black light. It's a kind of purple light that you can get. I think these are like 10 bucks. Or I think it was about 10 bucks. I'm trying to remember about that on Amazon. And you can see here that some of those colors do light up in the black light, which is kind of cool. I had them also swatched on a piece of white, and you can't tell really here, but there's only four colors that really show much. And it's those three right there, the yellow, yellow green, yellow orange, and then a little bit of that fluorescent blue on the bottom octopi show up. But it was kind of fun. You can also tell by just shining the light on the caps which ones are really fluorescent and which ones they just call fluorescent and they're not. Um, these are also not glow in the dark. They're not going to absorb light and then reflect it back when you turn the lights off. They need a black light. So I'm not really sure the purpose behind this. You'd have to send a black light flashlight to whoever you sent the card to for them to know that it's fluorescent. So there you go. Now, quick peek at the class that's coming up. It's called Copic Art Journaling, which I did years and years and years ago. I finally got around to doing a class on it. I'm going to show you not only how to do the techniques on the lesson spreads, but on how to do something with the pages in between where the color bleeds through. So I'll give you some ideas on that so you're not ending up wasting pages in between. There's some where you can add other panels in it and some you can just do some coloring things to make it work. Lots of great techniques that you can also use for cards eventually. So click the link in the doobly-doo to find out more about the class. It's probably going to launch in a week or so from right now. And that is it. Have I shoved enough into one video? It still hasn't reached 10 minutes, and I think I got a lot in there. So thank you so much. Click the like button if you enjoyed this, if you got something out of it. And I will see you again soon. Go get yourself some re-inkers, and I'll see you later.